my name is Emily Laufgraben. I grew up uh, in a suburb of Boston, Massachusetts, Brookline. There really weren't any what I would call believing Christians. It was something I didn't really have any exposure to except through the media. I came out to St. Louis for college and I remember being struck by kind of this incongruity between what the media was saying about how Christians were and what I was feeling from almost all the Christians that seemed to come into my path. The message I had been getting was that, you know, Christians are judgmental. They, you know, like to sanction people's behavior and look down on people, and they're cruel and, and disdainful toward people who suffer. And yet God was putting all of these Christians in my path who had this humble kindness and earnestness that I had never really experienced any other time in my life. It started getting me wanting to learn more. There was a very long time in my life where I thought there was something different and I wanted to kind of pull at that thread and understand what was behind it. But it was a really long time before I became a Christian. I'm kind of the unlikely candidate for this faith. I grew up in the Northeast, went to you know an elite school. People around me weren't Christians and kind of thought being a Christian was less than. It just didn't fit with the rest of who I was supposed to be in my social circle. The status quo wasn't working for me. Trying to think of myself as this intellectual elite who's better than everybody else wasn't bringing me joy. It wasn't bringing me connectivity with other people. I love to win arguments and be right. I'm smart, I'm educated, and it wasn't making me happy. It was making me more and more cynical and angry and feeling increasingly divided from my fellow man. That reached ahead for me in a really personal way. In the past election in November, I was really, really struggling with not understanding the things that people believed that were different from what I believed and feeling tremendous disdain for people. I really didn't want Donald Trump to win the election and then the night he won, it was probably the worst devastation of my life. All of a sudden, I came to one of my best friends who was a Christian. She said to me, I don't understand what you're feeling, but I woke up and I felt burdened by your pain and I just asked God to show me the pain you were feeling and why you felt it. And that was just so awe-inspiring to me and humbling that this person was asking in earnest to feel what I was feeling. There were kind of a few critical moments in my transition toward becoming Christian and that was one of them. We don't live in a world where there is a lot of humility and earnestness. I had a, a very hard childhood, especially considering I grew up in a family that was wealthy, had all of my material needs met. Both of my two siblings, my older sister and my younger brother, are autistic. And our family really had to abide by all of their needs and rules and restrictions just in order to keep the peace. And it was literally at the level where the police would have to come if we couldn't keep the peace because situations would escalate very, very quickly toward violence. The very first time my sister met me in the hospital the day I was born, she attacked me physically to the point of bleeding. And that was a lot of my childhood. And I didn't feel protected. It's not fair. It's just not fair. It was this pleading that my life wasn't fair. I was attacked daily and my parents couldn't protect me. Much later in my life, I was diagnosed with PTSD and my trauma has had a, a big effect on me. The world isn't fair, I'm being wronged, things are not as they should be. Really affected how I felt about the world, this anger that I had. I felt the lack of kind of this love and peace in my life. I felt that if I were loved, the world would be just and I wouldn't have to suffer. I didn't realize till so much later what that would feel like after I had that love. This past October, our close friends lost their family member very tragically. He was a police officer here in St. Louis, Officer Blake Snyder. And when I first found out that he died, I was gonna go to his funeral out of obligation to my close friends. I didn't realize that this police officer who was murdered in the line of duty was going to be the person, even though I never met him, who led me to God. Going to his funeral and learning about the kind of person he was had the effect of revealing God to me. He was a police officer who served with great humility and love and sacrifice for his fellow man. The people who knew him told me he would have chosen this. He knew how dangerous it was to be a police officer nowadays and chose this, responded to this calling 
because he was comfortable with the possibility that he might die in service and in love to his fellow man. And what is a more powerful way to witness to Jesus' love for us than dying in service and love for your fellow man? That really witnessed to me. I think also hearing his family members, who are my closest of friends, talk about how they still love his killer. And I thought, God, it's so easy to wax poetic about other people's suffering, and yet here were these people that were suffering only a week after his death, saying, yeah, they still love his killer, they still want to forgive. That's really, really powerful, and really, that's God's grace, and that just caused this huge impact on me. That was, I, I had to pay attention to that. I think that was when I knew I was saved. That anger and that trauma and that sadness and that despair just lifted and transformed into this love and care and compassion. There was something really divine in that, in the act of Christ choosing to die for us and then the resurrection. He took on our pain and in doing that we were redeemed. That has been a calling for me to take on the pain and the suffering that other people feel. Taking that in in empathy and compassion and in the process showing them the path out. That is what Christ did for me. All of the anger that I talked about, it all became love. It all became suddenly the people I hated, I really cared about and wanted to connect with. One of my friends observed that non-Christians seem to want to exclude and distance from those that make them angry or unhappy. As a Christian, I wanted to get to know them and embrace them and show them Christ's love. So it was this huge change from, you know, I'm defriending this person on Facebook because they, they're wrong and they disagree with me too. I want to connect with their soul. I want to show them what this is. That ego kind of sublimated and now I'm able to hear other points of view without feeling threatened and yet still, you know, quietly, calmly, peacefully and lovingly hold my ground and show and witness God's love for all of us. And that was my encounter with love.